Hello, and welcome back to Adobe Live right here on Behance, where you can interact with artists live on stream and make some friends by joining the chat. Uh, I'd like to say hi to Ore, Jan, Karsten, Jan again, Chandler, thanks for being here. Uh, if you stick around and you watch the chat, Jan might have some funny jokes for you. But enough of that, uh, we've been live all week with amazing editorial designers, one of them being Ozzy, who's next to me right now. Um, earlier today, uh, we had a couple streams before this. Uh, we started off the day with, uh, let me figure out the schedule, here we go. So today on Adobe Live, earlier today we had Barbara, she was with Christine, we call her Babs. Uh, after that we had Kindle and Ariadne. After that, Steven, right before this, and then now we're live with Ozzy, who's working on a publication summarizing the life and telling the story of Marjorie Copley. She'll let you know more about that here in a second. Uh, we also have some cool ways for you to engage with us. We're going to be doing uh, portfolio reviews. So if you'd like to get a portfolio review live on stream, all you have to do is share your portfolio with us uh, via the tab right above chat. And then we'll give you some feedback and hopefully improve your ability to present your art and yourself as a designer on the internet. Uh, and we'll also be giving away a free hardcover notebook from Moo, uh, which is super cool. It's got lay flat technology and you definitely wanna get your hands on it. So stick around for that. That'll be in about 30 minutes. So enough housekeeping. Let's turn it over to Ozzy and get a feel for what she's gonna be working on today. Um, so for the past couple days, um, we've been working on um, the beginning of the story, bringing in some imagery and um, featuring the interview that's going to be from a documentary about her um, by artist Jessica Henke. And yesterday, we brought in some like main storylines about her experiences in the Christie's auction, selling the portrait, and what she thought about the entire process. And today, we'll be finishing the story. Um, I'll be working on the spread, and then we're going to bring in some covers and refine the entire design together. Sweet. Yeah. I'm excited to see it come together. And as we're designing, if you have any ideas or questions for Ozzy, uh, she would love to answer them and give you some glimpses into her process and her techniques. So get active in there. Cool. Right. Want to yeah. jump into them? Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so... We have a lot of friends saying hi in chat right now. Hello. <laughs> Claudia, Jose, Munir, Helena, Argelina, I don't know how it's pronounced, Eric, Tony, Esther, uh, Bojana, oh my gosh, Hector, Karsten, Ty, Alexander, Alex Alexand, sorry, Ryan, Hazel, thanks for joining us. It's awesome to see you all. Okay, sorry. I'm doing some thinking around that. Cool, cool. Okay. So I'm not going to play on this spread that much today, but instead I want to work here and find, figure out a way to make this different and dynamic compared to the others. Mm -hmm. So I think. So when you say you want to make it different and dynamic compared to the others, is is that because those spreads you want them to like stand out for a specific reason? Um, yes, like I want yeah. every spread to be different from each other in terms of experience. Like mm -hmm. each movement. Do you find be... that it's hard to keep some cohesion though? Yes, it the... is. Yeah. There's like only that much space, but like possible variations. So I just don't want them to repeat one another. Mm -hmm. So that would be the tricky part. Cool. <laughs> So we've got Kathleen in chat. She says, hi, Ozzy. Hello. We're the dream team. <laughs> I, I think that be. was you and Kathleen. You were yep. the dream team. Jason, Munir, Berku, awesome to see you all. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for saying hello. Uh, if you're watching and you haven't said hi in chat, all you need to do is go over to behance.net slash live, join in with your Adobe ID, and come say hi to us. It's a great way to interact and get your questions answered. Cool, so right so, now are we scanning the other work to like yes. try and differentiate? Absolutely. Okay. And also like to find some like ideas from the content itself. Mm. Like what can I mirror? What can I repeat? Do you ever find when you look at work that you've already done, like let's say a day or a week after you're surprised 
about some of the decisions you made, like des design decisions? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Happens all the time. That's kind of fun, right? Yeah. So you're like, oh, what was I thinking then? Absolutely. Like, well, how did that happen? <laughs> but it, maybe it, it works, but you just can't remember why you did it. Yeah, I mean, if I have like intuitive decisions that definitely, like I forgot why I gave them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like maybe it just felt right to you yes. or something. At that moment, like, yeah. All right, we have a question from Kevin. How mm -hmm. do you keep the flow of the spreads and pages balanced? Is there an approach you take um, or do you just feel it out? Very intuitively. Like I just like, my only technique would be to like working from here is to like go back and see everything all at once as much as possible, as like often as possible. Okay. Just so I don't lose track while like being focused on one spread and like still be able to like think of everything else mm -hmm. at the same time. I mean, other than that. Yeah. Are there ever situations where you'll like, fin maybe you think that a project is finished, then you like print it out or do something. And then when you oh, have yes. it in your hands, you think, Absolutely. oh wait. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of like moments where it's just like, it looks amazing on a screen, you print out, but just like something's not right. Mm. I think it's always important to have that physical you know, tangible yeah. experience, so you know how it kind of translates to reality. Absolutely. Uh, we have a question also from sure. Esther. She's wondering where you go for inspiration. Um, Do you have any tips for that? I usually go for um, either the designers whose work I like or artists whose work I like because I'm like very interested in arts publications. I usually mm -hmm. like creep on museum websites and their own portfolios too. Do you have a favorite artist or like a resource, like maybe even a museum website that you would suggest or encourage people to go to? Um, not that I can think of right now, but there is a duo from Paris that like I just, they only like do artist publications and work with museums and cultural institutions. And it's um, Bizarri and Rodriguez, hmm. I think. It's awesome. just like, very inspiring to me, the work they do. I'm sure some of our viewers right now will look that up. Oh yeah. And they, might, they might share the link in chat if you want to check that out. Or Alexandre might even Paris. Know. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, also thanks. like Behance is an amazing resource I as agree. well. I think it's pretty fun, especially the Discover tab where it kind of looks at your trends for yes. what you've liked and then tells you, hey, you might like this thing. It reminds me kind of of the Discover tab on Instagram. When mm -hmm. you're like, oh wait, how do you know that I like all of these things? Yeah. <laughs> it just it just learns from yeah. research history. Yeah, it just usually creates the stuff that I would definitely like. Mm -hmm. Munir has a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your favorite designers that impact your design style? So I guess this goes back to the other question about inspiration. Um, I guess yes. one of the answers was the design duo from Paris. Yeah, um, I really like their work. They're like um, focused on like artist work. So I would say like Bizarre Rodriguez would be one. Um, the other is like, there's a Spanish designer, Ana Mirat. I love her work too. Mm. She like works mostly on fashion. Cool. And like works on catalogs and lookbooks. Do you like feel she like has like a distinct style that I really like. Do you think the world of fashion and editorial design typically play together really well? They do. Yeah. I think definitely they do. I think the aesthetic, at least to me on the outside, I'm not a designer, but it seems like the aesthetic is similar. Like yes. Kind of the same type of vibe and type of people, especially high fashion, they want it presented really well and clean. It really like has to be very like content and image oriented. Mm. So like, I really like, like how the design takes shape. Oh, cool. To kind of make that work. Have you done any projects for like for fashion that, that you've really enjoyed? Mm, not really, but I really want to. You should? Yeah. Hi, Ehrman, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. So, Anil has a question. Mm -hmm. He's Turkish, and he says that he has a hard time becoming an artist in Turkey and wonders He's how right. you managed to become a good one. Do um, you have any tips for him? That's a very good one. It's, it's a very like narrow field in Turkey and like serves to like a certain um, population, I might say. Um, I would just 
like suggest to like stick with what you think is the best always like um be on the lookout for international work or like mm. and um be self-motivated and just like research the books on your own read and learn on your own and not like depend yeah like completely and i think like even anil being in chat asking for advice like that demonstrates the sort of attitude that you need absolutely right? It's putting himself you're putting yourself out there you're asking questions you're doing research like and you're I, looking for the information yeah yeah and i think it takes that sort of drive to become good at really anything but especially in design where you might not have opportunities uh as easily as other places. Okay, cool. We'll get back to your design stuff. So, I'm trying to where are we at? Um, What's going on over here? So, I'm trying to actually um, place these two images, but I kind of want to have the white space hmm. um, in relation to another. So... And I also want the alignment to mirror something else that I used before, instead of like bringing in something new at the last two pages. Mm -hmm. so, so that kind of speaks just... to like having subtle consistency. Yes. While having like differentiated spreads. Absolutely. Like if I use something, even if it's just like a something that's a guide, I just want like that to be used a second time or a third time. So it's part of a system, actually. Mm. I broke that rule once, it's here. <laughs> we have to know the rules to break them. Absolutely. Right. And somebody said earlier this week that the, one of the marks of a good designer is knowing that, like knowing how to play with white space and not feeling yeah. the need to fill it all up. Absolutely. Um, so. It's part of the content itself and it definitely has a function. Yeah. Has an impact on the reader for sure. Yeah, I think I'm going to mirror this from these stills. So I, I like the content to be the mm -hmm. main guide. So do you, if like, let's say a viewer is looking at this spread for the first time, you want mm -hmm. them, you want their eyes to be drawn to the images first? Is that what you mean by letting the content be the guide? Um, not just the images, but actually um, the story. Okay. So like when I design, I imagine like um, like the sequence is coming as you read and learn, read and learn, mm -hmm. and like you don't understand something. So like each spread is a continuation of the story too. So I wanted to like use this photo and I kind of want to have it a little smaller. This is her when she's older, which is the same, almost the same photo mm -hmm. from the first spread where we introduce nice. the story. Yeah. Everything kind of comes full circle. Yes. So, yeah, that's like the main thing that pushes me while giving the decisions. When you're gathering assets, do you try to have like a, like tell a story like that? Something that's like circular that has like a flow? Yes. Yeah. I think that's... That's also a mark of a good designer is no like gathering assets or even taking images that with the story in mind, right? So Absolutely. You, you already know what you, the story you want to tell. And it isn't just like grabbing images and making them work. Uh, yeah, Esther, if your InDesign is freezing, you should um, take, take a screenshot if you have an error code um, and then contact uh, Adobe Care on Twitter or on the forums. They're super helpful. They can help you walk through the issue. Okay, I think for this spread, I kind of want to bring that back a little. So it also mm -hmm. plays the full bleed image, or maybe repeat this image. I like that. Do you typically use a uh, colored 
type, like、oh. red or like a color? Actually, not really. No? Kind of, yeah. But I really wanted to try working with red, and、mm-hmm. I knew I wanted to take the color palette from the portrait and let that guide the entire project. So when I have the red, I'm like, okay. Yeah, I want to try using、nice. the red. But it's something you don't see very often. Yeah. And it's a good opportunity to like lay down. I mean, the black would work too, but it's、mm-hmm. kind of like around mid hue, so it like lays on other stuff too. Yeah. I, I can use it on the black as well. That's super cool. Hey, Brian, thank you for joining us again. You were in the last stream, and I think you've been here a lot this week. Same for anybody that's tuning in now. We have a lot of viewers that have been with us all week, so thanks for sticking around with us. And if you would like a portfolio review, Ozzy and myself would love to give you some feedback so you can share it with us on Behance. So, a good way to continue would be to like do a little typesetting. So, if something changes. I don't have to change my design. Uh, yeah, Ryan, if you shared it in one of the last streams, you should share it again in the one that we're currently in. That way we know that you're actually here. Because we, we try to select a portfolio of somebody that's actually present in chat so that they can be there when we're pre- providing feedback. So, if you could share it again, that would be awesome. But Johnna likes the font that you're using. Thank you. What is it、That's、again? Sabon.、Hmm. It's an、That's、Adobe、nice. Type Kit by John Chico. It's one of my favorite fonts,、yeah. too. It's really good. Something we're celebrating this week, and you probably see it above chat right now, is Adobe Type Kit is now Adobe Fonts. Uh, you can go check out fonts.adobe.com and do unlimited sync with fonts. So you can take them all in projects. And in InDesign, you can do live preview of fonts, which is super cool. And you can sort of play around with them. So if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you should check that out. Brian has a nice question. She, she says she's、mm-hmm. got a beginner portfolio and is wondering if she should submit. And I think yeah, unequivocally, yes.、Right? Yeah. Doesn't matter where you're at, you can always get feedback and improve as a designer, especially when it comes to presenting work on the internet. I think what happens oftentimes is if you're familiar with a project, you present it with some assumptions because you know it well, and the audience might not have all the context. So sometimes the story that you tell doesn't come through the way that it would to yourself. And when you get outside eyes on it, it can help you gain good perspective. And chat and win, awesome. And you'll, you see our timer right now.、Uh, in about 11 minutes, we'll, ch- we'll select one person that's in chat actively saying something、uh, to win a Moo hardcover notebook that has lay flat technology. So stick around and you could win that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this press as it is for now. But. And we're coming to finish. And we have this much copy left. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good way to figure out right now what to do with here. Is that something you run、space. into very often?、Or? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Are there、so、any tricks, tips for handling、um, that? Just going with the gut, I guess.、Mm-hmm. Um, Just like going with the inner gut and probably bring in the image. Like, image is always it's a great content, great to look.、Hmm. What would you say to a designer that has a feeling in their gut, but they have a hard time trusting it? Like, have you ever felt like that? Yes. Oh, this、All、feels right, but I don't know how to, <laughs> right? Yeah. Maybe sometimes you just need to go for it or. Yeah, start trusting just it. Go for it. And if you change your mind, change the design. And until it, you just like, feel like, okay,、mm-hmm. I have to stop. And this should be it.、Yeah. It's always good to have opinion and like, ask people what they think too. So if anyone has any suggestions for the design, I'm happy to like, bring it in and see how it looks, how it works. Yeah, let us know what you think. I really love that aspect of these live streams. It's very give and take. 
So even sometimes if we have a technical question, like we can't mm -hmm. figure something out, somebody usually in chat will say, oh, this is the, this is the shortcut. Hit these keys <laughs> and you'll be good to go. So that's, it's usually nice. Try bringing this, maybe. Cool. Not this big. Is there a general rule of thumb you follow? Like, let's say you have, you have that white page and you have that image. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why you decided not to have it so large? Or was that again just like your gut? I kind of wanted to mirror this. Okay. Cool. So on the first spread, um, like this excerpt is from the main storyline that like the last spread is finishing right now. And I kind of wanted to like connect it back to how we initially like yeah. opened it and started. And I put them together to mirror them with one another. One is a painting and one is a person. So now instead of like where painting is, I just want to have the person. And actually it's kind of better here. So yeah, I changed that a lot. Do you find that your design process, especially in the beginning in terms of setting up your layout in your grids mm -hmm. is like a really important step because I can tell you I can see you using a lot of that those lines right yeah I mean it's definitely important even if I'm not going to use it I just like set it and have it there mm -hmm. and then decide to like nah I want to break it but yeah it's still good to have that on the back kind of gives you a little bit of reference yes I feel like I would skip that step maybe and then yeah I think I would get very lost like halfway through a spread <laughs> and then maybe the consistency might fall apart um, like you're now like you're, you're able to mimic placement right and you know yes, where absolutely. it is because you have a grid I mean even if it's not a grid like mm -hmm. no matter where anything is I can always like copy oh, that yeah. and I don't know, figure out a way to bring that but I still like to have lines mm -hmm. yeah that's a good trick the x and y coordinates Okay, we have a question from Munir. Mm -hmm. What to consider when you choose fonts and colors for your project? Um, I would def. I mean, if you have like a very, like, dense subject, I would definitely just go with whatever the subject is. And like, if it's like from a certain era, I would like check out the fonts maybe like produced in that era, um, or if that's like a part of a movement. If it's like, I don't know, like a corporate thing like you would definitely like go for like accurate Helvetica or like kind of like something that plays with your concept I mean mm -hmm. for the colors too you can always like um, pick it from your images I think that that's one of the best ways yeah I think that's a great tip and I do that a lot and I don't think to do it all the time but if you're using images yeah. like why not you Absolutely. Just <laughs> use the dropper and you all of a sudden everything looks nice yeah, it like automatically works with each other. Yeah. That's like one of the things I really like. Something actually cool that uh, Adobe Capture, it's like a mobile app. I don't know if you've played with it, but it can use your camera to mm -hmm. uh, take a, a picture of a scene and then pull out color palettes from it. So if you really like the vibe of like, let's say a room or a poster, you can take a picture of it and then it'll like put bubbles on different colors on the poster oh, and great. then you have, a, you have a color palette. You can sync it with your CC libraries and you can use it on a project. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So it's like a cool use now that we all have like these amazing cameras in our yeah. pocket that we don't use probably as well as we should um, in terms of like actually getting their value out of them. I think that's a really good use case for creativity. Yeah, I'd love to try that. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, hey, Dale, awesome. Thanks for sharing your portfolio with us. You should share the link on the, with the form uh, on the tab above chat that says portfolio review. Uh, and that way we'll have it there in the form and then we can make sure you're in the system. Hi, Olivier. Thanks for joining. Awesome to see you again. They're saying capture is magic. <laughs> Super cool. If you haven't played with Inside capture, you should check it out. <laughs> it also has the ability to take a picture of a typeface or a font and then it, it guesses what it is 
or gives you that's like a lifesaver yeah it's amazing <laughs> or it gives you ones that are similar right yeah so it's like what oh, i spent so much time hunting down fonts like what is this capture should be you should get it it's totally free you can just okay. download it on your phone and then like i said it syncs with your creative cloud library so whatever you do on it you can just pull it into your your other apps oh, and also vectorize this thing so if you use illustrator okay. Um, and you have a sketch, you can take a picture of it and then turn it into vectors and pull it right into Illustrator. Oh, cool. Pretty cool. Adriano, thanks for joining us. Great to see you again. Just in time, actually. We have about three minutes until we select a winner for the Moo hardcover notebook. Mm. And this is the last one of the week. So this is your last chance to win one. And then we'll probably do some giveaways next week, but it might not be notebooks again. Oh yeah, Alex, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, you can also get materials for Dimension with Capture. So Dimension's are like a 3D mock-up. Mm -hmm. Have you played with it? It's pretty cool. You can do yeah. like three-dimensional mock-ups and you can, you can grab textures um, and materials for for your 3D objects with Capture. I'm definitely going to like play with that. <laughs> yeah. Sounds very interesting. Maybe if we have time, we can. Oh yeah. Play around with it, but we'll see how we'll see how the design goes today. I want to make sure that you feel comfy with your design. Oh yeah, finish it. <laughs> yeah. So this is the spread that had just text just a moment ago, correct? Yes. Yep. And now it looks. So this is the. Looks nice. Thank you. This is our last spread, and the store finishes here. So. And like, you know, like how you're like writing, you always like have a thesis, and your conclusion should definitely tie up to how it all started. So it's the same idea in mind, I think. Mm. I want to connect this to the first spreads beginning. Have here. Cool. Hey, Nado, thanks for joining us. My name's Gus. I work here on the Adobe Live team. And if you've ever joined the chat before and talked to Adobe Live, chances are you were talking to me. So. Just today, I'm in front of the computer and in front of the camera. Or I'm out from behind the computer. Hey, Everett, thanks for joining us. We have another yawn in the house. Two yawns. I don't know if the internet can handle it. Pratik, thanks for joining us. Uh, Pratik says that they like the sideways text. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think I used it like three times. Mm -hmm. The last one mirrors this one. And I kind of like, like that vertical colored box on the back. So it's a little like a ribbonish. Actually, maybe it mm -hmm. should be shorter too. So it's more like a ribbon. It plays with that like red and like her story, like working as an escort. Yeah, I think that's like a, that's one of those details as a reader you wouldn't pick up on right away, but if somebody asked you to analyze the publication, yeah, you might come up with what you just said, right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, the reader even like doesn't have to know, but yeah. it's good to have like a something that leads. I, I just love that. Decision. Like, you know, like in school, you're you'll have teachers or professors that'll say, "Hey, re really break down this chapter in a book," right? And you start to think about things in different ways. If you can build that intentionally into your work, then I think that's like really amazing. It's not just yeah, like accidental, you know? I mean, it definitely can be accidental too, but I definitely like the other way around. Yeah. All right, we have fireworks. Oh, you know okay. what that means? Oh, are we putting these on? Not yet. Oh, okay. No helmets <laughs> I'm yet. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> All we have to do is give away the oh, okay. last Moo Notebook of the week with lay flat technology. So if you'd like to win a notebook, all you have to do is log in on behance.net slash live, 
super easy. Log in, join the chat, say anything in chat. Um, just come say hi. You don't even have to answer a question. Just, just jump in there and we'll be right back. We're gonna play a cool, cool intro. Boy, we got lots of moves in chat, some pew pews, some mood time, some hype. Oh my gosh. I wonder who's gonna win. Do you wanna take guesses who the winning name's gonna be? I don't know, from chat? Yeah. Um, I think it's gonna be Brienne. Maybe Dale? You think Dale? I'm gonna guess Brienne. Who's it gonna be though? Ori. Oh, maybe it's Nado. Oh. It could be Andrea, <laughs> or Ryan, or Olivier. Oh my gosh. The anticipation's killing me. Uh, and, oh, it's Claudia. Claudia is a good friend of ours. She's here all oh. of the time. <laughs> Claudia Joss, congratulations. You've won a hardcover Moon Notebook, lay flat technology. Uh, to claim your prize, all you do is follow the steps that'll be sent to you via direct message on Behance. So look for a message here in the next couple of minutes. And if you didn't win the Moo Notebook, and you'd still like to order something from Moo.com, all you have to do is go to Moo.com slash Adobe Live, and you can get 15% off your order. So no pressure, but if you're planning on getting anything, use the code. They're looking for Claudia still. <laughs> Where's Claudia? She's here. She's just, she's in shock. She's so excited. All right, the next big event we're gonna have is in about 30 minutes. We're gonna be reviewing portfolios. So now that you've participated in the chat and win, and you're here, and you're present, and you're listening, go ahead and go over to the portfolio review tab, share your portfolio with us, with the form, and you'll have the chance to get it reviewed live on stream. And Esther, the person behind Adobe Live is not Paco. And I'll leave it up <laughs> to them to self-identify. <laughs> if they so choose. Keep it secretive. <laughs> Sam bought in the house. That's right. <laughs> if that was Gus, then who was phone? <laughs> yeah, you're too much, dude. Jan, Jan has been a friend of mine for a long time and he plays uh, a digital card game called Hearthstone. I don't know if you've heard of it, it's a Blizzard mm -hmm. game, but I play it also, but unfortunately we're on different servers. Hearthstone? Hearthstone, yeah, like, I haven't, it's yeah. it's pretty cool. Well, if, if you like card games. It's not cool, it's, it's for kids, <laughs> but it's fun. But it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. We both play that game. Do we have any gamers in the chat? If you're a gamer, say, say what's up, I'm a gamer. Uh, oh, not. Oh, Nat. Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, you're asking about Capture. Um, it's super cool. It's a free app. You can download it on uh, an iOS device, also um, on the Play Store, the Google Play Store, I believe. Um, and what it does is it uses your camera to do some pretty amazing things. One of the things it can do is vectorize sketches. It can analyze fonts and give you suggest like suggested fonts that look like it or might be that specific font. And then it also can take pictures of real things in the environment or artwork or whatever, and then extract, extract uh, color palettes from it. So it's free, you can try it out. You just go to the app store on your smartphone and download it. Oh my gosh, so many gamers. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in good company right now. All right, now that we have a lot of gamers in chat, what are your favorite games? That's the real question. Oh, there's just so much. Are you a gamer? Pick. Yeah, let's say yes. Yeah. Used to be. I don't do that anymore because it just takes up too much time. <laughs> <laughs> the perils so of growing that. old <laughs> and having bills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, no responsibilities. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do that for the next week. <laughs> uh, what are your favorite games when you when you were gaming? 
I like RPGs. Yeah? Yep. Like World of Warcraft style RPGs or like? Mm, both. I, I really like Skyrim. Yeah, I like that one too. And I, actually, I never played World of Warcraft. I was a huge Lord of the Rings online fan. Oh, I played that. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty awesome. I, I like stopped that because I just paid too much money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've got some Blizzard fans in chat. Diablo 3. Hazel, oh, yeah, you, might, two is amazing. you might not believe it, but at one point I had the top PvP Amazon on US West. The best, the best PvP dueling record. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's on Diablo 2, Lord of, Lord of Destruction. Quake, racing games. Oh, I love it. I agree. I think that video games do take up a lot of time, but they yeah. still have a special spot in my heart. Like, I think at a certain point, Absolutely. with moderation, they're definitely still worth the time, to me at least. I agree. So you kind of have to like organize that for the free time, yeah, and not do it in between of deadlines <laughs> and due yeah. dates. <laughs> right. And then whatever else life is throwing at you. That's right, Kathleen. Get off me, barbarians. Get off me, paladins. All about that Amazon <laughs> life. <laughs> Jan says he remembers the summer of 96 when he played the software version of Quake 1. Amazing. Jan, that's, that's pretty time. epic. I remember playing Quake for the first time probably a few years after that, and it blew my mind. But I wasn't allowed to play it because I was pretty young, and I think it was pretty violent. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so you decided instead of, is that the same one that you originally had behind the, yes. the text? Do you feel like they were competing? Like a little. VR? I thought that was a little um, crowded there. Mm. Now it feels too repetitive. Mm. What if you Maybe like... Hint? inverted it or like like reversed it that'd be crazy i think that's a good idea I think one of the fun things about design is making decisions like that that sound crazy, but then yeah. just seeing how they look. <laughs> and they might be crazy, like they might not work, but you don't, for, at least for me, I don't know until I actually look at it. Yeah, what do people think? Do you I'm like curious. it? Do you like it upside down? Uh, or maybe instead of upside down, it could just be mirrored, like instead of her facing uh, to the left, maybe she's facing to the right. I don't oh, know if you can do that in InDesign. Maybe. Let us know. Wait, wait, I totally. Wait a sec. I had it. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like this mirror. better. Now she's looking down to the copy. Uh huh. So that's kind of like a nice movement. Mm hmm. Brienne, I'm yeah, glad you like the music. That's a mixture of Chill Hop Records and Andrew Apple Pie, courtesy of DJ Pac-Man next to me. Carla says, nah, not upside down. But Hazel <laughs> says she does like the mirror. I'm assuming you like the mirror. Yeah, you like the mirror too. Yeah, I like it. I think when you said it was too repetitive, I think you were right. And I think this keeps the repetition, but also changes it just enough. Yep. I definitely agree. Just want to make sure. They're but the same width, at least. Oops. Oh, what the? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, wait. I just click something. Whoa. Things got crazy real yeah, fast. Instead of fixing that, I'll just create it again. Esther says the, the mirror looks good. Yeah. Cool, thanks for yeah. the feedback. Okay. 
when you thought about like originally creating this editorial mm-hmm. spread and zine around Marjorie Copley, did you think about including anything about Andy Warhol into it, or did you want it just to be? Actually, Marjorie? I wanted to be about her. I still wanted to, like include Andy, but kind of like in a little like goofy way. Mm. Like there, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> I I like it. I feel like it does justice to the story, right? Because you don't want her story to be overshadowed by this iconic name, that, like yes. everybody knows. And then you're thinking the whole time, like, when do when do they talk about Andy? Um, oh, there was a like, what did what am I missing? There's a, actually a journal entry that I also wanted to include. Oh, cool. And I think I, yep removed it from here because I wanted to add it differently. Nice. Yeah. This is very interesting, actually. <laughs> Do you think that will require you to adjust those last two pages? Yes. So I'm going to adjust this. Nice. <laughs> and get back to it, see if it works. I think this is a great example, though, of like how design works, right? Like yep. You've got to be flexible and then rearrange your components. Yeah. I mean, not attach too much to the design because like... Everything can change <laughs> in mm-hmm. a second. Would you mind while you're designing um, telling Marjorie's mm-hmm. story a little bit again? We have Brienne's asking if, if you could tell about her story. Oh um, yeah, um, Marjorie Copley, um, she's a young girl from Pittsburgh, 14 years old. She goes to um, New York and then like um, life happens. She's raped, she has a kid and like her story like develops after that point until like she becomes a very like high paid escort and she meets an art collector who is very close friends with Andy Warhol. So um, this is how she gets to meet with him. And then as kind of like a wedding gift, um, he asks Andy to um, commission her portrait. Hmm. It's portrait, but then. Um, Which becomes quite famous, right? Yeah, it becomes really famous, but like she doesn't. So um, that's part of the interesting thing. And she's part of the women's club. And um, during this interview, that's a part of the documentary. Artist Jessica Henke is filming right now. (laughs) Um, So during this interview with the editor, like she mentions that she wants to write. And um, like when the editor asks like, what do you want to write? She like starts bluffing up the story, like I'm the girl from the portrait and like, this is how it happened, how I met with him. And yeah, and it's a very interesting story, like her memoir, like how she's like in the art scene and like she looks at how things work. Like her portrait goes for like $4,000, $400,000. And wow. she's shocked. <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty yeah. interesting to like see the person behind the portrait that looks like a painting. Yeah, and I think especially with Older, older portraits and paintings, You, at least I always tend to wonder, like, who was that? What was their story? Yeah. How did they... Because you're right, at the end of the day, they don't really get any recognition. Um, so it's nice when you can tell a story, shed some light on the subject. Uh, Iray, uh, thanks for joining us. He says, it's lovely to see a Turkish designer on Adobe Live. <laughs> Thank and you. We will review two portfolios at the end of the stream, um, actually here in about 15 minutes. So if you've shared your portfolio, you have a chance to get a review. We'll only have time to do two of them. Um, And if you haven't shared your portfolio yet, please do so. All you have to do is fill out the form on the portfolio review tab right above chat on Behance. Brianne says, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Modern day Mona Lisa. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so kind of want to include this right in between the story where she actually like mm. goes in and say like he even like wrote a part about me and she said like part of it was a lie. <laughs> oh wow. And I want this entry to be right here even if it's like dividing the page. Is it too long? Mm. I mean, I'm not a designer. So oh. you know better than yeah. me, but but maybe um, just because you really kept the, your columns pretty tightly, at least from the spreads that I've seen. Um, but I think it's nice that you broke it once because it kind of does draw the eye 
and it's something that's different from the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So it's a journal excerpt. Yeah, maybe Got I can. Yawn making Doctor Who back. jokes in chat. <laughs> And Sajad asks why you used the red color for text. Uh, we went over this a little bit ago, but she decided to use the red because she she used the color palette from the portrait, more or less, right? Yep. I started just by bringing in this portrait, and we got a color palette. And I actually had something very close to black, but I still wanted to go with the red mm. for the type, so I can overlay on a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I like it. I was actually thinking, see how this look big. Hmm. And it's readable. It's actually a great picture. Yeah, I really like this photo. Yeah. The guys there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Creepy. It kind of actually, though, it's like kind of a little bit metaphorical, right? Like of, of her story, a little bit like the ghost of the past in terms of like oh, yeah, her experiences be. and also her experiences with her portrait. And it's a guy, right? Yep. Stephen, thanks for joining. Glad you think it looks good. Valdair, awesome to see you. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us, everyone. If you're just tuning in, we're live right now with Ozzy, who's putting the finishing touches on an editorial spread, or s several spreads. Would, would you call it a zine? Or um, publication? Publication, cool. yeah. A, a publication that summarizes more or less uh, part of the life story of Marjorie Copley, who became famous after Andy Warhol took her portrait. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. You probably already explained this before too, but we mm -hmm. actually had somebody ask earlier um, if you, like where you came up with all of the copy, like mm -hmm. all of the text, and if you wrote any of it yourself. Oh no. These are written by Marjorie herself. Okay. And the interview is a script from this scene. Mm. Cool. Like, so there are like exact moments. Actually, yeah, I think I want to print this too. Yeah, after like after the event, <laughs> so it's actually it would be good to add some bleed. Do you like writing? Like, do you find yourself writing also? I do, but I also do a bunch of grammar mistakes, so <laughs> it demotivates yeah. me a little. I'm like, I always need an editor for this, <laughs> but it's fun. I mean, as kind of like an activity, I really like it. Yeah, I feel like working with type so often and layouts and editorial. Yeah. I would, I would be kind of inspired to also write my own stuff. Massimiliano, thanks for joining us. Jacqueline, nice to see you. Uh, Jacqueline's wondering how you put the quote in between the paragraphs. Oh, sure. This one? Yeah, I think the one we just added yep. in. So I just like right click, go to text frame options. Um, I edit the space. Um, not that it doesn't come with a space, but you can just like add some extra space here depending on how you want to align it. Mm -hmm. um, I remove the left and right so I can like perfectly put it next to the text and you can just like go and wrap around bonding box or you can actually like play with other mm -hmm. options too and like have it on the text completely or like just, yeah. That's so neat. it just like changed automatic. Oops. Yep, like this. Yeah. Hopefully that helped you out, Jacqueline. Let us know if you have any more questions. Hmm. I like the way okay. this is coming together. Do you ever um, think about and worry about images that are right on the crease? Or is that not a Actually like an issue? I do. I mean it's it's good that like very divides. Mm -hmm wouldn't be like the information that's very important. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, as long as she's here, like kind of like that's where the actual thing is going on. Even the birds are nice and this one's very unlucky right now. <laughs> yeah. I think the placement's about as good as it could be, right? Yeah. Because the each side kind of tells its own story. Uh, one side has her and one side's more like a, you know, just a photograph. The Absolutely. ocean and some birds. 
Yeah, for this one I tried doing that. It just like cuts the guy's head, so that was very off. Mm -hmm. Here too. Heard someone. So those are captions for the photos. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, I don't have to include it every time, but I really like it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a texture addition. Something you can do if you're interested in doing this, and I'm sure actually. Let us know if you'd be interested in seeing this, but sometimes our guests on Adobe Live will make a project on Behance out of what mm -hmm. they've created. Um, then everybody can kind of go and look at the final, the final project. So if you want to do that, they can all check it out when it's done. Oh, some, yeah. Some weeks from now or whenever you finish it. Absolutely. I don't think that's always a nice, you know, because they watched it form on stream and maybe <laughs> even sometimes had some, some ideas that were implemented. Yeah. And then they kind of see it come to fruition. So that's it's rewarding and kind of cool. Yeah, you really want to do that. I think I'm going to. Cool. I look forward to seeing it. Valdair says, sorry he missed, but how does he activate or make the lines when zooming in? I don't know. If, I don't know. What exactly. does that mean? Could you maybe... Um, Try and ask it a different way. I don't think we're sure. You mean like making the guides visible? Uh, yeah, maybe that's it. I just click W. W, that's your key. So maybe just zoom in and hit W. Okay. Hey Ahmad, mm -hmm. awesome to see you. It's nice to uh, say hi to you with my voice and not just on the Adobe Live account. Ahmad's been with us all week uh, in most of the streams. So thanks for coming back for the last one of the week. And actually, this is the last stream of the week, but we also have some streams tomorrow. Um, they, like, this is the last editorial design stream of the week. And tomorrow we have two streams that focus on UI and UX design. So if you're interested in that subject, we'll have a challenge in the morning at 8.30 a.m. And then later on in the day at 12 p.m. or noon Pacific time, we'll be live with Talon Wadsworth. Uh, he's like the lead designer of Adobe XD and he'll be prototyping and playing with some of the new tools and taking live feedback from our community. Oh, great. So if you want more live streaming, there's gonna be some more tomorrow. Was InDesign one of the first Adobe programs you learned? No. no. <laughs> what was the first one? Photoshop. <laughs> nice. Do you remember it's what like version? It's kind of like a Yeah. Um, very old Photoshop. I, I don't remember the version. I remember mm -hmm. using, we had it in our computer lab when I was in like middle school. I think it was CS3 maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, it could be. Like, yeah. yeah. And I just remember being so overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really know it that well. And I was trying to make a signature for a forum that I was a part of. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that's how I got into graphic design too. Really? Yep. Sort of the like a, same thing? I was doing post by post role play and we had to like create graphics for the like fictions and threads cool. we write. And that's how it all started. <laughs> nice. And that's when you knew, like, all right, I enjoy this. I want to keep going. That's cool. If you're watching now, mm -hmm. let us know how you got started in your design field and maybe what your first Adobe program was. Yeah, when I first saw InDesign, I was like, what is this? 
This is pink. <laughs> You know, it's always funny to think like how how colors play with one another mm -hmm. um, and sometimes like you'll put two next to each other and then it makes both look like they're different colors <laughs> and you don't <laughs> yeah. know until you overlay like, you know, maybe a blue on top of a red. You think, oh, huh. We've got Page Maker 6.5 from Sarah. Um, I think I saw somebody else was sharing about it. Jan's first Photoshop. All right. Yeah, Jan did Photoshop and Illustrator in 1995. Does not remember the version, but they were pre-Jobs Power PC. Wow. Photoshop back in 2009, Photoshop 7. Got Illustrator. Kevin H. Snyder says Word. I'm assuming that's Microsoft Word. So that's old school too. Iray, um, who is also from Turkey, says mm -hmm. that they got yeah. into graphic design through a role-playing forum yeah. also. <laughs> is that common? Apparently, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good to know. That's crazy. So cool. Yeah, graphics, like, because it's all like written, graphics became like a huge part of the visualization mm. while you're playing. I think, it's, I think I'm... it's funny and so true how like when we're kids, we're really impressionable. And we also just like really want to find things that we're interested in. And as soon as we find those things, they can like shape the next de like few decades of your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's how I learned English too. Nice. Yeah. Did you teach yourself or did you take some classes also? I, I was already like taking classes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a part of the curriculum at school, but also like, there were like this literate forums and like you had to have like good writing skills to be accepted so like just playing my playing it happens organically that's cool naturally. yeah i wish i knew a better lang or another language a little bit better we took spanish classes or i did in school like all the way through but i never used it i never like immersed myself in the language and i just feel so out of my depth nowadays <laughs> that's the best way to learn a language yeah Photoshop CS4. We've got a lot of people that started in Photoshop. I think that's pretty common. There's a lot of uses there. And we've also had some people commenting throughout the week that InDesign is a bit intimidating for them and they haven't really tried to use it yet. But I think once you learn it, you learn the system, um, it's actually pretty intuitive. I agree. I was very intimidated the first time I used to. Did you learn InDesign because of a class or because of a project they were working on, maybe work? Um, I had to, um, for a work before like I studied design, I had to like edit this file that was done in InDesign. That was like my first encounter mm. with the software. Like and it was sent so it intimidating, <laughs> yeah. I had to like download InDesign to oh. be able to open the file. I'm like, what is this? Oh. And and you're like, of course, too, of course, yeah. I, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're trying to figure I it out. I haven't even have it installed. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Ore says, I didn't have any games on my first Mac, so I used to play Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I had spent as much time in Photoshop as I did in other video games, I would be so good. But instead, I wasted it. <laughs> And just a really quick heads up, we only have 10 seconds left for you to share your portfolios with us. So this is the last call for portfolios, and then in about a minute, we're gonna go ahead and review two of them uh, live on stream. So you'll see your work on stream and get some feedback. Uh, if you don't get one today, we actually do this usually on most Thursdays. So if you come back again next week or the week after that, we'll probably be doing more portfolio reviews. So come on back and try again. We got a lot of Photoshop fans. <laughs> Kathleen says, not true, Gus. You learned economics in video games and then majored <laughs> in economics. And it's actually true. <laughs> That's how I got so good at Diablo too. 
or like oh, ru- or like run the market. <laughs> yeah. And buy and sell and trade items. That's how my dad played it. <laughs> he never killed anything. <laughs> yeah, I didn't care about that part at all. <laughs> All right, okay. Ludo Val, you're right. That is the deadline, that's the portfolio review deadline. So we're gonna review portfolios here in just a second. Um, and then right after that, we'll jump back into the design, probably wrap it up for the week, give you a demonstration of everything that Ozzy was able to create this week before saying, see you later. So uh, right before we do our portfolio reviews, I just got word that our spaceship has been gassed up and it's ready to take off. So with that, uh, we'll be right back everybody. What did you say a second ago? Huh? You feel like who? Daft Punk. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to space. Welcome to the International Portfolio Review of Space Station. I can hear my voice echoing inside of this helmet right now. It's freaking me out. So it's I'm gonna so take weird. this off. You can okay. take yours off too. We're not gonna pull a Steven Zoo and wear it the whole time. Although, you know, that's cool too. But what we're gonna do right real quick is actually review two portfolios that were shared with us by our awesome community members. And the first portfolio we're gonna review was submitted by Anil. Is that how you would oh, pronounce this? Anil. Anil? Yeah. Awesome. And Anil's from Istanbul, Turkey. Um, awesome. So what we'll usually do is kind of just give a review of mm-hmm. the general presentation before jumping into some projects. Okay. So one of the first things that I'm noticing is that Right here at the top, you've indicated your your specialty. So your graphic designer, digital marketing, uh, your location, and also a link to your Instagram, which is cool in case you know somebody looking at it wants to see yeah. maybe what your account looks like. Although I see that you've actually it's private. So um, if you're going to send people to it, you might want to think about either making it public or maybe making a separate Instagram that's dedicated for your work uh, that's public. So that might be something good to do. Um, I also really like that, like, consistent use of mock-up on the second row. Mm, this one, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That's like, are these, like, nice. posters? Wait, the rower one is this? very... The daft. The daft. <laughs> is this daft fun? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> we'll look at it. <laughs> but I think that's a good point. It's, it's really consistent. It's easy to, to digest. Yeah. And I think the rower one is mm-hmm. very bold. Definitely, like, draws my attention. The colors are very good, I mean, even if I like don't read it, I know that's mm-hmm. like Roar, yeah. just the R. Yeah, I like that that's too. That's very good. Cool, so maybe this is the first one we'll look at. But real quick, let's scroll down on the left side here. Um, something that's cool too is also you're part of a team on Behance for label and tag, which I think is the Instagram account that you had linked. So I think that's cool that you're part of a team. You've got your focuses, your social profiles linked. Uh, something that I think would be cool in your About Me section is actually to have a short bio saying like, yeah. hey, uh, here's what I do, here's my experience level, uh, maybe you're employed and you know, that you're know you just trying to show off your projects or maybe if you're seeking work, you say, hey, contact me here, I'm open for projects. It can be a nice area to kind of put out your message. And then you have your work experience and then a, a view full resume, which is cool too. That's pretty neat. Cool. So you want to jump into a project? Um, yeah. Cool. You want to do Roar? Okay, let's start with that one. Let's do it. Oh yeah, I really like this. So I'm totally going to lean on you for, for design critique. Okay, yeah, it looks yeah. like oh, this is just, okay. this is it. This is the, this is the project. Um, falls under the category, I guess, of graphic design and photography and typography. Yeah, I really like the use of typography here. So that's like, I know, like mm-hmm. what I want to like focus. Um, I mean, I kind of like pretty much said it, so I mean, it's definitely the use of the middle letters that like stand out to me because you're definitely like creating, uh, like, um, be- like you make it busy for the eye, but that also like keeps the viewer hooked mm-hmm. and like you totally like just cannot roar without actually making it legible. So I really like that play. Mm-hmm. I think that looks good. I also like how. Uh, he did something similar to what we were talking about earlier, where 
um, used sort of a color palette. And I know that mm -hmm. the image has been been edited and adjusted a little bit, but use this, the same color pal palette for the background and for the type, um, which I think is it's nice. Yeah. It all works together really well. I cool. agree. Something that I would I would really like to see is to see just a short description that says maybe what the project's for or why you created it, um, just to give it a little bit more context. So as a as a viewer, I know what you were thinking when you created it. I agree. Also, maybe like you could include the mock-up in the um, zoom in section too, just so like we can see that up close. Yeah, that would be just cool. Just like the mocked up version as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. But super cool. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. I'll let you. I'll let you pick. Anyway, I'm actually curious about the first one. Cool. The wolves. The wolves of Cernogratz. That yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, I really like the type play mm -hmm. here and like how you placed it and like the Z's edges, kind of like on the corner. It's off centered and that like. The word off is like very weirdly placed. Mm -hmm. I really like that. It's just very like. It also looks the like there's <laughs> sort of a gradient a little bit. Like. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm actually I checking the word. I can't really zoom in much more than that. But it looks to me like maybe it starts kind of gray over here mm -hmm. and then it gets like into full black here and then stays. Which I think is kind of neat. I'm curious to see if it's the same vibe throughout. Yeah. I what do you, like that what do you think about the, like, uh, the, I guess the opacity on this type? Um, yeah, I like don't below uh, here and here. I see it. I think they could be a little darker. That's what I was thinking originally. Like Just a little. Uh, it says, I am dying in any case. So you can definitely read it, but it's not super legible. Yeah. I like this logo. I think it's really cool. Me too. I, I was actually thinking about that. Maybe like you could try. Um, using a little narrower line quality so it kind of like works in consistent with your type on the cover it feels a little thicker compared to the type in mm. my opinion but the, i really like the, logo. Like the shape yeah. that definitely i think it's great yeah that's a really good point okay so we have we have more context on this one it's mm -hmm. a con conceptual editorial design for the short story named the wolves of cernogratz by h h monroe so it's cool. So we know we know why this was created. So we have some basically this again, right? Mm -hmm. Down here. Good angle. Uh, this says uh, one of the greatest short stories. So this is seriously playing with with the white space. Yeah. Um, it's just one line, but it actually I, is I think really it's good. pretty. Right? Yeah, I agree. So this is a good example to show you, like, you don't have to fill it all up. Um, again, sort of a layout. Yeah, I would definitely make that gray you use throughout the book a little darker. Mm -hmm. So now the copy is really dark and, like, stands out. But I, I really like the space you have in between. Yeah, I do too. I think that's a good call, though, about just making sure that all the type's legible. Yeah, maybe you could narrow down a little bit. Mm. The column here? Yes. Yeah. I can see like that. Just like a half inch or so. What do you think about the page numbers? Do they work for you? Um, I actually like them. They, yeah. they look big. I kind of like them too. Yeah. I think they've got, if for some reason they have the same feel to me as, these, as this layout <laughs> with the line above them. Uh, they <laughs> yeah. just feel like they have a bit of space, like they're big and they... Oh, yep. there's something red there. Yeah. So th I feel like this is kind of breaking the mold right yes. now, right? I really like that. That's kind of like a surprise. You don't expect it because it's like very subtle and mm -hmm. white and minimal going and then. I wonder if this is like a striking quote from the book or something. Like something from the book that you're supposed to be like, oh, I can't believe. Did that just, I don't know. I'm, I don't really know the short story, but that'd be a cool use there, I think. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, do you want to look in here? Sure it is tough, and I, I can't zoom in any more than that. Yeah, I, I really like the code. I'm just not sure about the underline. Mm. So it's sort of a similar thing that he's doing with the page numbers. Oh, yeah. But mm. might not you be can, necessary. You can right? 
actually try instead of like having it on under maybe like top of the sentence hmm. that would be interesting yeah yeah it's cool Why not? Oh, and then this i think it's the same as the last spread mm -hmm. um, and then please appreciate the project if you like it and follow for more cheers of course we'll appreciate it <laughs> and all thanks for sharing this with us this is super cool um, and I think, again, the context on this one's a lot better. Uh, yeah, and I'd, I think I'd like to see more, actually. Maybe, like you said last time, uh, having, like, a mock-up. Because mm -hmm. I think these are these are mock-ups, but yeah. it would be cool to see it, like, um, with some elements around it, so you have context, like, how large it is and how, you know, how it might look in reality. Like, someone's holding it? Yeah. yeah. Something to give it some spatial yeah. reference. I think that might be kind of nice. I agree. That's super cool. Okay, we'll do a really quick one more, and then we have to move to the next one. So we have some graphic design, some branding. I just want to look real quick if this is that <laughs> fun. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You two are on the same wavelength. Oh, yeah. What about New York? What like this? Okay. So yeah, it's, it's one it's card cool. again. Looks good. I really like the color choice and the fact that the Y is hidden. You like mm. the hidden Y? I do, but I just think it's too hidden. Maybe you could reveal a little bit more. Yeah. Like. I was thinking either more or less. Yes, I don't, like either completely, yeah. maybe. I would also move the city like off Empire State and maybe like have it like start from the O or like or not directly but between a little like mm -hmm. through the end maybe yeah I think that's a good call in terms of because I mean you're really he's, he's playing with Statue of Liberty and this building which I don't know exactly which building it is um, yeah I mean the boldest thing yeah. is like on the left, it's not centered, so it would be good to not have anything like stand out in the center and have the statue. Mm -hmm. Cool. Do this thing. I think that's a good call. But overall, great color, color scheme. Oh, yeah, color. I like your type choice. Color's amazing. You like the type choice? Yes, I do. Yeah. I think it's nice. It's a very like high rise type. Yeah, yeah. it feels kind of like cool. Yeah. It's like a city typeface. Absolutely. I like it's almost moving a little bit. Or like the typeface you might see it like. For an action movie, <laughs> it yeah. kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for sharing your portfolio with us, Anul. Um, if you're watching um, um, right now in chat or watching later, feel free to check out profile on Behance. All you need to do is go to this URL up here, um, and you can give a uh, follow and an appreciation, which we'll do right now. All right, on to the next. We have our good friend from Cleveland, Ohio. I'm from Ohio. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, Esther. Oh, right. So Esther is a good friend of ours. She attends a lot of the Adobe live streams, and I'm thrilled to be able to give a portfolio review. But again, awesome. I'm going to lean on you for the for the design feedback. Okay. But we can kind of start the same way. Okay. I, I like this area again. Mm -hmm. Super clear. It's easy to follow. No pun intended. I really like that you have like the email address there. Mm -hmm. we, right down, right here, yep, yeah. Like, yep. The bold. And the website here. Yeah. It's nice. You know where to go. You got the web yep. profiles here. There's a bio. And then here's the bio we're talking about. It's actually a, a bit long, though. I agree. I find that if you were to keep it about as long as this first paragraph here, really whittle it down and make it mm -hmm. digestible, maybe three sentences. Yeah. Just like very summarize yeah. like what you do. It'll probably, um, it'd probably come across a little bit better. Because I know for myself, I'm prob I'm not thrilled about reading all of this. I know I'll do it, but, you know, it's a lot. So, yeah, yeah there's I a tip for you. Uh, your work experience is awesome. Also has the resume in here, networks. And then again, the email at the bottom, which is cool. So we, we definitely know how to get a hold of Esther, which is cool. And Rob, Rob, Rob is right. Rob Zilla says it's the elevator pitch. It's sort of like, who I, who am I? What am I about? Mm -hmm. Here's why you need me. <laughs> kind of yeah. like a landing page you did there. On the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it actually makes sense. Yeah. 
<laughs> yep. Cool. So let's check out some some of her work. Does anything stand out to you? The second one stands out to me. Cam? I want to see that up close. Let's do it. Because I really like the type. So this is for the Cleveland Architecture Magazine. I think that's the concept really definitely works. Um, I mean, I really like the type, but like, I don't know, maybe like serifs a little too fashion-like. Yeah, I think I'm having trouble with this font, this oh, yeah, font choice good. below Cam. I agree. I don't think that play, it, they, these two don't work super well. In, in my opinion, I'm, I'm, I'm not a designer. No, but I, I feel like I they give different true. vibes a little bit. That's true. I mean, yeah, the cam font, I mean, it's a great font, but it reads a little like fashion. So like maybe like having a like sans serif at the bottom would balance that out. Mm -hmm. So it would still like be very architectural. Yeah. I like overall, the, I think the layout's nice. Um, and I think it's really easy. Like if you look at this, at least to me, it reads architecture right away. Yeah. Like I know this is an archi architecture magazine, which is pretty cool. Yeah, the placement of the elements are great. Like the photo and like how like it's all asymmetrical and like kind of mm -hmm. goes together. I think that's a like, good call. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go. We'll go into the first spread right here. I really like the dashes. Yeah, yeah I do too. That's, that's pretty creative. I think they're fun. But Especially since you, you've used some hashes too, like at the top and the bottom of the pages. Um, and these, this is kind of the same thing again. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it would be, it's too much? Like pick one or the other, or do you think that they work together? Um, you mean the border, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, the sort of yeah. border at the top and the bottom. Um, I think like you could definitely like pull this spread without the border, but like, um, it would also like work kind of like as the frame and you would definitely like mirror what you have on your cover. Mm -hmm. That would, though that was a little thinner, I think. Was it? Yeah, it was yeah, just I mean, solid You line. could definitely like use kind of like this on your spreads and yeah, have a border. Consistent. Yes. Um, yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, but uh, I actually really like the dash. Maybe you could change the other borders to dash because that's kind of like a very like architectural. And, yeah. I think what's interesting to me is this font choice you used on the cover. Like this is the same one that uh, says the name underneath Cam, but it kind of works for this vibe. Like mm -hmm. it's for like medieval and history, right? Mm -hmm. So it kind of reads to me a little bit like an antiquated typeface, something that might have been lost or something that's old. Um, so maybe that's why she used it also on the cover. Yeah. But I feel like it works better on this page, in my opinion, than it does on the cover. But yeah. There was, I can't read the content. Oh, <laughs> I'm yeah. short sighted. No problem. Do you want me to scoot it a little closer to you? Yeah. I'll look on the screen up here. Okay. We'll, we'll go to the next one because we are actually running a little bit low on time. Okay, so I think what's interesting actually is that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is a magazine for Cleveland architecture, but once you get inside, it's yeah, kind of like about history, right? That's kind of like where I get a little confused too. Mm -hmm. I really like the image placement on the spread. I think they're definitely like, you move the eye and like I like where you place the captions. Maybe the, for the third one, it can be on the outside, like yeah. maybe like upside, sideways, mm -hmm. so it's consistent. Yep, I think that's a great call, having the caption outside of the border. Yeah. Uh, and again, again, I think if you use the same square used on the cover, mm -hmm. it would be kind of nice here, maybe, and then maybe bring this image down a little smaller like you did yeah. earlier in your publication. Also, if you, it'll be around like where this armor ends. On the first page, kind of like this. Mm hmm So, bring this up the same as this, you mean? Oh, no, like, kind of align the bottom, like, a, oh, holding here. the same ratio, align the bottom to the armor, so it's gotcha. kind of like around that space, mm -hmm. and you'll have, like, a nice... And I'll give you more room for this. ...white space around. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really good call. And I think the same can be said 
for this page too, just making sure that there's some balance going on. Um, I, although I feel like this is pretty indicative of like a historical yeah, thing, right? Like this is how they laid it out. <laughs> um, super cool. Know, maybe, maybe just the last one I wouldn't center. Mm. Would you bring it to the right, to the left? Maybe, I mean, even if it's like not smaller or like still cuts like the other visually, I would still like maybe like align it to or like either right or left. Hmm. Okay, so I get oh, it now. I like uh, Esther color. was, uh, she did it focusing on the Cleveland mm -hmm. Museum of Art in a specific exhibit. Oh, okay. So I think what would be cool for me is if on, let's see here, like somewhere on this project, mm -hmm. you uh, might be at the bottom. Just gave a little bit more context, but I think you did give context here and we were missing it because mm -hmm. I was going through the slideshow. So she has here Clever, yeah. it's the cover. Or maybe something on the f like front cover, like not like completely, but indicates mm -hmm. or like connects to the inner content, just a little, maybe like a touch of color or like maybe you can do the dashes is yeah. that a solid border? Yeah, I agree. I think that would be nice to bring the vibe of this mm -hmm. into the spreads. Like after you get past the cover, you're not surprised by what you see. It's like, oh, this this makes yeah. sense. But okay, sorry. You said you like the you like the back. I really like the back cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do too. I love it. It's so so good. Yeah, and it's very like they oppose each other, like totally different, and I really like it. Like. Yeah. It's a like, good consideration of the object itself. Mm -hmm. And you did a really nice job mocking this up too. Like, I don't know. I just, I like the way, I like the way this is set up here. I think it looks really good. I agree. Um, and again, I think having it with like some spatial context would be cool. It's not necessary, but especially when you're dealing with print, if you're able to, yeah. maybe if this was printed, like let's say this actually was created, to take photos of it would be so cool because then it comes into real life. Yeah, someone said on Behance, context is king. Yeah. I agree. It's so it's so true. <laughs> it's so important. really really tell your story. Like your images need to tell a story, but you yes. also need to you need to tell the story too. And let people know why everything is there and why you created it, how it started, why it's important. Show your process. I think some people forget to do that. Mm -hmm. They don't show their sketches or they don't show the first like few steps of the process. Yeah. And I think that's also really important to see. I agree. But overall, great job, Esther. I think we are pretty much out of time for portfolio reviews. Oh. Uh, we can give a, like 10 seconds. Okay. Real quick. It's not going to be perfect, but let's just scroll through it. I think something I like on this one is I feel like it's there's more consistency. Mm -hmm. Like this kind of True. matches this. And it kind of kept the really same like border. I really spread your table of contents. Yeah. I think that's very interesting. I also really like where you place the um, title on the cover too. I really like that. That's kind of like yeah. where is the sea line yeah. and like where are the ships coming. I think that's a great idea. Mm, that's a bold spread. I like that. Is this like the most fun annual annual report? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like here's paradise. Check it out. Yeah, on that spread, like I think it's really good that you align it like to the lighthouse. Maybe you could like just shorten your mm -hmm. column a little or like make it two yeah. separate but i think the placements there is really good too i agree i like it i like how this is down here real subtly it says like harvest key and give some information yeah. about where it is all the cruise liner pictures figures not too overwhelming but has all the points i really like that detail in the corners. Yeah. Yeah. I like it too. Okay, cool. All That's right. what we've got. Esther, thank you for sharing again, um, just like before. It takes a lot of courage to share your work with us and get a critique live on stream, especially in front of, you know, a lot of people that are watching online. So we applaud your courage and we also thank you for sharing your work with us. Uh, it's really, really amazing to see. So before we go, let's let's do a really, really quick look at what you've created. Maybe we oh, can yeah. Like 30 seconds, is that cool, Paco? Yep. Really quick, this is recap. what we've been working on for the past three days. This is our cover. 
and the intro. This is where the interview takes place. This is one of my favorite spreads. This is the main storyline where she's selling the portrait. Mm -hmm. And we have a second side story going on at the same time, which is about her decision, the crossing over. And here we have Andy's diary entry, and we have the end spread. Awesome. And our cover. And it all comes full circle. Yeah. Right there at the end. Well, well, you've done an amazing job this week. Thank you so much for sharing your process with us. And, Thank you um, for hosting you know, me. Answering questions and giving people a look into, you know, your mind and how you mm -hmm. work. Uh, before we leave, uh, just if you want to, go ahead and follow Ozzy on all of her social channels. Uh, we'll have a moderator that shares it in chat here in just a second. And yeah, if you want to say bye or anything, oh, yeah. wanna feel Thank free. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. We'll be live again tomorrow morning at 8.30 with an XD Daily Creative Challenge show. Come back. We'll see you soon. Just to you. I found you.